Terry, thank you so much for doing this. How are you feeling? No problem. Uh, well, you know, old and tired. How are you guys doing? Hey, buddy! Hey, buddy! <laughs> you speak? We're feeling good, man. We're feeling better now we get to talk to you. And the listeners are feeling better. Seriously, the top text right now, please just tell Terry that we love him. Thanks for keeping us informed, entertained, and especially for the laughs along the way. Bye, Cracky, and who are you crapping? I mean, that's a standard <laughs> standard greeting for you from so, Score Nation. So not much has changed, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, um, it, it actually, it really is, as I've emphasized to people before, the other way around. I mean, I thank them. I didn't, I didn't do anything but be the idiot that I am. I mean, it, it never um, really dawned on me as you're going through it. You guys both done it. You've done it a long time, and you're great at it. And you, you don't really think about it. You know, you, you don't feel it. Here's how weird I am, and, and maybe it's just me. It could be that I just am slow on the uptake, which is very possible with anything remotely resembling technology. Uh, I was going through the phone yesterday. My wife was giving me grief because I, I had so many messages. I said, I, nobody called, nobody, nobody sends me messages anymore. Well, it turns out that Dan Bernstein, my guy, had sent all the letters that came in after I retired. And now he must have done it at the time. But see, I wasn't smart enough to know it then. I, I, when you when you look at my history of the phone, it, it's like the stupid find a mule. I mean, it, it just nothing. I couldn't remember. So I went I went back and I was looking through all these messages, and I'm going to tell you something. It brought me to tears. Some of the stuff from the from the people who listen to this station. I I I, um, I don't remember having such an emotional day since the day I actually retired. Is that? And I don't know if I'd read them before or not. I don't remember doing it because there are probably seven hundred of them, wow. at least. And that will that will have a tendency to clog up your mailbox. So um, I, I it's the other way around. I, I thank them. They've they've got nothing to thank me for. Um, I, I I it finally paid off to be the idiot that I've always been. I, I was just waiting for the right medium to show it. <laughs> yeah, but you're... I've heard you say this before, and you always have this ability to be self-deprecating. Well, I'm just an idiot. I'm just a dummy. I don't know I anything. <laughs> I, 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 I know, we, and we all are, to get into this crazy business. But but there's yes. there, there was there's something to that. It, it It's what made you beloved. It's what made you likable. I'm not saying that it was calculated or not genuine, but like that that ability to be like, hey, I'm just me. I'm just an idiot. So I'm just going to tell you what I think, take it or leave it. That was part of the Terry Boar's charm on the score. That that was it, too. I I mean, it wasn't – I I didn't do it intentionally. I've always felt that way about me. I don't have a, um, a big ego getting in the way of anything at any time, and I never did. And always questioned everything I did and, and double-checked. And even when the station started, I was still double-checking. I mean, I, I, I took the job on a part-time basis to start with. I kept the job at the Sun-Times and uh, for the first eight months, for those who don't know. And because I, I, I wasn't sure. And I, I, I mean, when you guys look at it, how dumb can you possibly be to think you weren't sure of a sports station in Chicago? <laughs> <laughs> Seems <laughs> obvious now. Yeah, it seems obvious now that you know success that the station continues to have with guys like you is is really pleasing to me. I, I mean, it makes me happy that after all these years it's still going. That Burns is still as good as he ever was, and probably better. So, because uh, I told him the other day, we talked about something. And I said, you know, I said the last thing in the world you ever need is anything from me anymore. You you you, you don't need nobody at that station needs my help to do anything. Oh, not oh, true. Right. Not 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 true. There's there's a certain magic to the way that you dealt with stories, especially ridiculous sports stories that you would just pull every ounce of comedy out of over the course of a segment or an hour or three weeks or whatever, whatever it was. <laughs> um, Terry, you know, you call yourself a, an idiot and you reference the sports writer days. At the beginning, you had this huge batch of, like, funny and acerbic sports writer pals all over the country, right? Art Art Teal in Seattle, uh, Patrick Mm -hmm. Royce in Minnesota, um, Mm -hmm. all these different guys were your buddies, your your brand of idiocy. What? And then there's you and there's Hanley and, like, people who started here. So Mm -hmm. many of them tried to cross over into radio. What makes them good at it or while others were not because i'm sure there were some funny acerbic guys that didn't do it what what was the key to making it to making that transition do you think for some of your pals 
You know, I, I think it it was just being you. I, I, I think that's it, it's it sounds like the simple easiest thing, doesn't it? Just be you. Be be who you are. I, I mean when I see you at a game, when I see you at an event, whether it's a Super Bowl or recovering a baseball, whatever we're doing, just be that guy. That that's what I did. I, I was that, that same guy that used to feud with Ditka. I, I didn't change anything. Nothing, nothing, you know, was made new by me. It, it, I always felt that going way back that you just, you take it or leave it. I mean, a lot of people hated me. That's fine. And that's so what I wrote. And, and a lot of people seem to enjoy it. So, I mean, I think you, you don't worry about so much about what they, they don't like you. They don't like you, but be who you are. And those guys were funny. Those guys were funny in the press box. They were funny anywhere they were at. And Art and I used to play basketball. He's six six, so we used to play basketball when I'd go out there and and uh, see him, or we'd go to have a, a Super Bowl or whatever we would do or whatever we were covering. And we would always have a basketball game together, you know. And he kicked my ass because he's just a big monster dude. And and but he was being what I found about these about most of these guys, and that includes the guys I worked with, that. There was no different, and I, I always felt to myself, don't be any different than that guy you are. Mm-hmm. You don't have to play a role for anybody. You guys don't play a role for anybody. You're exactly who you are. I, I mean, there's no role playing. There's no, okay, I'm going to be the acerbic S-wipe today. No, no, don't worry about it. You you already are, but it, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, just be who you are, and there are going to be a lot of people who say, I, I don't get it, and there's going to be a lot of people who enjoy it, and... That's what I find. I mean, I found out when I was writing, I used to get letters you wouldn't believe from people <laughs> when I was writing. And it's funny how it it, um, it translated into the radio simply because I did so much radio. I mean, I, I, I spent a lot of time with Chet Kopic. I mean, I spent, I remember in the Super Bowl, I spent two hours on the phone with him. The Super Bowl <laughs> in Miami, that Montana, that the, the 49ers won with that late pass. From Montana, and I mean that was a hell of a game. But I spent two hours on the phone with him, and I'm, you know, I used to think, what am I doing? I, I have no, you know, there's no avenue for me to do this. I just said I enjoyed the give and take, and and whatever it was, and I enjoyed the give and take with the listeners. Yeah, but they had I the mean, avenue. Most of them, yeah, the avenue eventually <laughs> did present itself. Terry Boards is our guest on Score Stories. All right, you mentioned Ditka. What is, you know, what, what it, was the genesis of the beef in the writing days or was it in the radio the, days? The writing days. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't like him then. And I still don't like him. And uh, I, I think that yeah, there is just something about him. And I know he was a, and with each passing year, the Bears continuing to play football or whatever it is, it, it, it probably makes a lot of Bears fans miss him even more. I mean, it's sort of. Um, really not much going on there at this point. And uh, you've changed everything again and starting, here we go again. But yeah, it, it goes back to the writing days. And he, he didn't like anything I said, because he, you know, there's some guys that are very sensitive to it. And some guys I could still deal with after I criticized them. There's some guys that could take it. The adults. You know, they'd say, oh, oh okay. All right. Yeah. All right. But I, I never had any problem with it, but not him. Well, not so- even the slightest. You know, when we started doing the show together on the station, and I had do it. I didn't have to do it every time Ditka, the Ditka show was on, but because of the position of the station, everything I had, to, I had to do it. I don't mean it. Probably worked out to maybe once or twice a month only when when um, he was on. Cause he was on every week, and those were probably the most uncomfortable times they ever had, and and that made the rest of it easier. It made it, to deal with everybody else at the station. Uh, made it a lot easier after trying to deal with him because we never spoke to each other off the air. Never. Well, he it, never yeah. spoke to me. He, he'd get up and walk away at breaks. <laughs> I, oh, but it's, it's so unbelievable God. though, Terry, because like any, any what we've, we've done these for, you know, a few months now and everybody will say Ditka was a huge part of the early success of the score, right? Not doing Great. press conferences, but coming on the station. And then you're doing the show, and he's doing something for the station, but he hates the guy that he's doing it with. Like, that's just an unbelievable <laughs> dynamic. <laughs> it really was. And look, I understood his value. I, I mean, you win in this city of playing, you know, playing football, you're, you're going to be something. And I, I, I completely understood that. But he he completely hated me, and that went back a couple of years. So I mean, I had no no chance to ever. If I if I said to myself, you know, I'm going to start to to try to get him back on my side, 
I knew that was hopeless because what in, in Ditka's world, if you do that, you're done. As he, as they say now, you're dead to me, and that's what he was. That's what that's what he basically said to me. So I I, I gave up the ghost. I knew we had to do the show. We just stayed out, stayed kept our distance. We did the show as best we could, and I think people still probably enjoyed it. We have a little give and take here and there, but he um, but when when that light went out and we were in break, I mean he got away from me as fast as he could. Wow. Like, like most people do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> not not when you're talking uh, on the radio, as we're gathering more listeners by the moment with the very presence uh, of, of Terry Boers. Uh, when I first became conscious of the station, Terry, it was mm-hmm. Cher and Memolo in the morning, and then yep. Mike North and Dan Jiggets, the monsters of the midday, and then you mm-hmm. and Dan McNeil, the heavy fuel crew in the afternoon. And when you guys did transition at, like, what, 155 to 220 yep. was that yep. heavy fuel and, and North, everybody's game got raised. And now we do transition with every show because we're yep. trying to capture the magic that you guys created. Did you, do you remember looking forward to those and, and did it I feel do, as yeah. special to you as it felt to us? No, I, I, I it did. Yeah. I, I look, look, first of all, I, I'm not kidding myself and nobody else should be kidding themselves. I worked at the time that the fact is that when the, when the station began, Mike North was the guy that he, he was, he was the guy that, that attracted listeners. He was the everyday guy. He was not the writer. He was not the, you know, the inside guy, but he had very strong opinions. And some of the interviews he did were, were just unreal. The one with Michael McCaskey was a classic. So yes, I, I did look forward to visiting with him. And I, I, uh, I always felt every day and, you know, I, I and Dan Jiggins and I went way back. Jiggins was always such a, so, and so, such a really warm, kind human being that you couldn't help but like him. And what you heard on the radio was exactly what he was, by the way. That's exactly who he was. Hmm. So I, I, you know, but North, I'm not, I don't make any bones about it that he was carrying the station. I mean, he, the stuff he did was so outrageous and outlandish at that time. It was so crazy. <laughs> but, but he had never stopped him and nobody ever said, hey, don't, don't interview anybody like he didn't care. If he got Michael McCaskey on the phone, he wanted an answer. And, I mean, he asked the best questions. I, I So I have no uh, no part of me that says, oh, yeah, that Dan and that and that, and I really saved. No, we didn't. Uh, no, we didn't. We, we, did our, we did our part. But, I mean, that station in those early days belonged to Pappy, as we called him. <laughs> <laughs> it belonged to him. I mean, that, that's just the, the you know, what, what history shows after that, eh, which – now you can get in trouble real easily. So, I mean, back then, it, it, it took a little more to get in trouble, but um, he, he uh, held sway for a long time. And I, I, until he went off on his own, he started to do his own show. And I just didn't, you know, I, I didn't, I think, I always felt like you still needed that partner. And I still feel that way. Mm-hmm. I prefer that. I did some shows alone, but I still prefer having somebody with me, like uh, Danny Parkins. I'd love to have a Danny Parkins with me. Oh, you did, you, which you, we've done. You, you did. You, That's you, very you had, kind of you. You had you had a Bernstein. A Parkins is is a is a better Bernstein than Bernstein was. Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about any of this. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I, Neither I don't do know. I. I don't know. Well, no, but it, it, it is interesting though, Terry. Like. Sometimes I show up trying to think like you, Terry, is what I'm saying, because I feel like I have a version of uh, of Bernsey, a Danny in his own yeah, way. Yeah, Speaks has said that he ch- he's the what the just the, the personality, make, make it lighter, funny, relatable. I, d- I don't need to show up and be the thoughtful, analytical, rational thinker guy. I've got him next to no. me. You know what I mean? Correct. So you can relate to that. You can relate to that, right? Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, I can. I mean, uh, look, I, uh, yes, I, I, I certainly can. And we did it for a long time together. And Dan Bernstein is a Im- remarkable talent, a remarkable talent. And it had, you know, people say, well, that, that show was really good. I, uh, you know, you did this. And I said, no, 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 no. We did this. We, we, you didn't do nothing. I didn't do anything that he didn't do. So, I mean, it, it um, Takes two, I think, to make it make it great. And sometimes that one wears the other one out after a while, but not in this case. <laughs> not in this case. And until the day that I am not here anymore, Dan Bernstein and I will remain friends. And we will always remain friends. And same with Dan McNeil. Even though he, I know he's persona non grata with some people now and so forth over things he said. But I, I know what he meant to me as somebody just try, trying to 
fit in and figure out what this was all about when we started because I wasn't really sure. I mean, I'd done enough sports stuff to know a little bit of, you know, what was expected, but I didn't really have a feeling of what it was like to do it every damn day. <laughs> every day, buddy, not, not, not on Sundays with the sports reporters. No, 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 no. Every day. So, I mean, I learned invaluable lessons from both of them. And to this day, I am grateful to them and always will be. And they were there for me when I needed it. And, and that, that is really the true story. It's not that I became that. I, no, I, no, I didn't. I, I, I was the same guy when I quit in, um, well, health knocked me out in 2016 as I was and not much different. I had learned more, had gotten smarter about it, but really not any different than the guy who started in 1992 when the score opened. Not, not that much different as a person. I mean, I don't speak. I don't know if you noticed any difference in me. I don't think so. No, I mean, maybe it's a little warmer. We all theoretically get a little warmer and a little more empathetic yeah. and welcoming as we age. But you know, you stayed. You stayed nice and mean. You stayed yeah. in a really good, healthy way. You and you and Dan, um, me and Mac used to call you guys the freight train of hate and indignation. You and Bernstein, <laughs> like. Every day, the freight train of hate and indignation would take off for some destination. Nobody knew exactly where the de- – and when the destination was worthwhile, there was nothing better. Like when you guys were going after Steve Alford or when you were going after – Oh, the, the Penn State stuff. Like nobody has ever driven a freight train of hate and indignation better than you and Birdsey. That's for sure. I, well, I don't know about that. Anybody's never done about it, but yeah, we there was a there was a train that took passengers aboard, and uh, yeah, when we saw something, we, he would never let it go. And I and I would always say, well, you know what? It's worth. Yeah, we, I think we should just continue to go after them. That, that that's probably right. I mean, all the other stuff we we'll get to, but when when you see something so wrong, yeah, so awful, and as we as we've learned now over these last couple of years, even. This stuff was going on in Michigan with that doctor back in the back in the time when you wouldn't even expect that this uh-huh. would ever. Yep. You know, so I mean, anything that you can shed some light on, bring them out of the shadows, bring them to the public. I, I gonna beat them to death. I, I mean, that 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 was the modus operandi what we had, and because too often they operate in the shadows forever, and you never really find them. You never really quite get them where you want them. And we had those guys exactly where we wanted them, mm-hmm. exactly where we wanted them. So yeah, I, the, I remember the train of indignation. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know something, it wasn't a put on air about it either. No, no, no it was genuine. Well, with that stuff, that is that yeah. is for me. Uh, I mean, that is just I, I, as low as it gets as a human being to do with a that. I mean, I, I would still to this day. If somebody said, well, you mind uh, running up here and pulling a switch on this? No, hmm. not, not in the least bit. I would. <laughs> the guy from Michigan said, that guy, yeah. I, I, if you said, hey, would you, would you ask? Yes. <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> this is Terry Moore's lining up for the execution so of Dr. Dr. Larry Nassar. To flip the switch. <laughs> yes, <and> no. Yeah. <laughs> No, it, 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 oh, absolutely, and I mean, I remember listening from out of market to some of the Penn State stuff, and it was just it was it was appointment radio. You guys were one of the signature shows in the history of this station. I like Danny picturing Boars in the executioner's outfit with the cloak and everything, just with going up a big there. smile on his face. Yeah. Hey, buddy, <laughs> That's it's my it's my pleasure. <laughs> the last thing you well, see he is right Boars hood over his head. So I, I, um, I, I yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't feigned. You know, it wasn't. I mean, I still get mad about that stuff. Mm-hmm. I still gets me when I when I hear that stuff or read that stuff or know that's true. It still gets me to this day. Do you walk around I saying mean, "by cracky" or making penis jokes just randomly in your everyday life? No, oh. no, I'm, I'm too old for that. No, oh. I don't. I, I've stopped doing that now. That uh, makes sense. Somebody asks, but uh, <laughs> not not <laughs> not so much anymore. Hey, I'm, you know, I, I mean, when you get up there, you mellow out a little bit. Uh, but I, I, I see. I'm, that's why I'm glad that Bernstein w- was who he is because that guy is driven too. So when you get something like that, you know he ain't letting it go. And if he ain't letting it go, I sure as hell ain't letting it go. So I mean that that <laughs> we're not, that's not how I operate. So it wasn't how I operate when I wrote, and it's not how I operate when I wasn't writing. So it, it's um, you know, too often we we get these sports stories that are just god awful. 
just in amongst all the stuff that we can have fun with and enjoy. And, and then once in a while, something pops up that just makes you so damn mad. You, I, I, I'm still mad at this very minute about some of this stuff. So right now I'm still mad about that. So, I, I mean, that that is not, um, you know, there was nothing – Artificial. We didn't sit down and say, "Okay, how mad should we be today?" No, no, you you didn't need to. But, but you didn't it, need to. It, it was genuine. The, well, and it, but it, that there, sure there was there was a lot of anger. But, but Terry, you also you broadcast with a lot of heart. Like you you were the soul of this station too. Whether it was Father's Day, you know, I the 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 letters that you would post or how Mac would talk about how you taught him how to be a father. And people around here still talk about your reaction to September 11th and not being able to do the show that day. And then what you said when you came back, Um, you know, part of this segment, what we've been doing weekly is trying to chronicle all of the history of this stuff. What, What do you remember about the Boers and Bernstein show and how Terry Boers felt September 11th, not being able to do the show. And then what happened when you came back? Uh, you know, I, I, had, I never would have dreamed that day would come, but we were sitting around when the, when the uh, first bombs hit and the first planes hit. And, and I just, I, I couldn't take it. I, I mean, it, it's a professional thing too. There was a, there was a part of me that on a personal side, I, I was crumbling. Uh, absolutely for those people i i was crumbling and the professional side said you can't just not do the show and i and i argued with my and i had time there i had about an hour, hour in there or so before we uh went in the air and i i just you know i tried i just couldn't do it i i, I don't know what i would the, the feelings were so awful that day that i didn't i i just couldn't it was a um a part of me that I didn't really know, even really know existed, because I'm not uh, waving the flag every day or doing this. Not, I'm not. I'm not one of those guys. For those who know, and that that's not what I do. But that day uh, took something out of me that's never really been replaced. And I still see stories on the anniversary and so forth. And we had the 20th. I see you see all kinds of stories that just break your heart. And I, and I, I drove home that day. I couldn't tell you which way I went. I couldn't tell you what time I got home. I couldn't. I, I couldn't tell you a thing about that ride. I was so out of it. I thank God I didn't hit me. But I, I mean, I just I must have been concentrating just on that because I just couldn't do it uh, mentally. I could not put a thought together. And when we came back, I was ready. I I, I was finally. I finally, you know, because I sat there the entire day and then well into the evening and well past midnight watching and just absorbing it all. And I, I just could not cope. I mean, it's a sad thing to admit when you can't cope with something, but I can't, I could not cope with it. I could not justify it. I could not find a way around it and say, okay, all right, it's over now. Now, now we take the next step to me. That stuff is never over. Even when they kill the bastard, I'm still, I'm still, uh, I'd like to kill him again. So <laughs> I, 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 I don't, um, you know, I, I can't, exactly put a finger on why I felt that way. I, I just, you know, I, I think it's shirking your duty. Really. They would call that in 25 years of doing the score that that's the one day that I absolutely positively <laughs> could not do a radio show. And I, I just locked up and could not bring it out of me. So, so, you know, Ron Gleason, who actually Ron Gleason is the guy who put Boris and Bernstein together. And he was there that morning. And, uh, he said, well, Terry, go home. It'll make you feel better. I said, yeah, you know, Ron, I, I, I really think it would if you don't. If you don't. He said, no, I'll, we'll take care of it. I said, I, I said okay. So, I, I, um, you know, some things just hit you that I – and I, I, I don't know if I'm the only one who felt this way. I, no, I, I don't no, think no, not. No, no, no. no. You spoke I, for I, a I lot of people, empty. though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, empty. You know, just empty. And I, I didn't um, – you know, you're supposed to do a job, and I, I even told him. I said, "Well, you know, uh, you know, when I got back, I said you don't have to pay me if you don't want. I, I didn't, I didn't perform that day, so he said, "No, no, no eh, nonsense." I said, "Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm healthy, I'm there, and I, I, I just couldn't do it." So it, it's very difficult to explain how something happens to you that you this vapor lock where you can't, you can't digest it, you can't quite figure out what to do about it. And you can't quite get in your mind, what do I say about it? 
I, I mean, I watched it. We all watched it. At least most of us who had a chance, and not, not as it was happening, but later on we saw it. I, I, I don't know. I, I have no answer for those questions, even to this day. I've never really thought about it again in terms of what, what happened to me. I've tried to. Here and there, I, once in a while, I say, well, so why, why didn't you do the show that day? And, I, and I, you know what? I still haven't come up with an answer. We have a, we have a couple quickies for you here, Terry. Um, how's Peach? How's, how's Peach doing? She's fine. Everybody, everybody's fine. Okay, Everybody, good. They're all good. I'm not good, but they're good. Um, how's Larry Horse? Uh, have you talked to Larry at all? Is he doing okay? Oh, no, well, Larry and I visit. Yeah, oh. he's been dead about 10 years now. But, we still <laughs> but you still visit. <laughs> that seems good. Visit. Okay, good. Um, and then a memo. the monkey, uh, it, it is is your monkey alive and well? Do you feed oh, yeah. the monkey? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, he's still, yeah, and he's still not feeling well. So he's always on call. <laughs> Okay, these are, these are good he's things never, to know. And do you believe in Justin Fields? Yeah. Do, 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 the, do the Bears have a quarterback? Uh, good question. Uh, <laughs> I think I need to see more. Yeah, <laughs> us too. Yeah, that's understandable. Us too. Are you sure? What do you think? No, yeah. no one's sure, Terry. I just wanted you to make me feel better about it because we play in these 30th uh, anniversary promos. We play the Bears got Jay Cutler. Hot. Damn! Like I damn, got, yeah. I, we, we were at Wrigley Field that day. We were at the bar at Wrigley Field when they got Jay Cutler. And we were celebrating, like, you know, like they got <laughs> Dan Marino. Yeah, I, I mean, I have no idea. Hey, you know what? One of the one of the beauties of doing this is that you 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 find a little piece of humble here and there because. You're wrong just as much as you're right. And you oh, gotta, yeah. you got to deal with those days, too. And I little did I know that Jay Cutler was such an asshat. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I knew he was to some extent, but not to that extent. Hey, and can, plus, yeah, plus, he wasn't that good. Hey, can we borrow uh, Can we borrow ass, uh, ass hat? We want to do a segment called Asset or Ass Hat, where we try to figure out whether somebody's valuable or an ass hat. What do you think? Yes. Can we borrow that? Okay, good. You Thank should you. do it, yeah. All right. you, you should do it. Okay, good. Thank you. That's your word. Terry, people <laughs> love hearing from you. Uh, they they mark points in time in their sports life, in their family life, in the history of this country, like the, with, with how they experienced you uh, through the Heavy Fuel crew or Boars and Bernstein. So thank you for making time. You, you sound great. Uh, hopefully, best of health going forward. And uh, you're an icon in this city and at this radio station. Oh, so dude. thank you. All right, love you guys. I, I appreciate the kind words. I don't deserve them, but I appreciate them. And uh, you guys are great together, by the way. I I, I I still listen. I get in the car, and I I I'm I'm there, I'm there. So um, you guys are well on the way. You you're well past well on the way. So anyway, <laughs> I appreciate the kind words and um, love to all. Love what? to all. Not not to Penn State and others, <laughs> but but love to all. Thank you, Terry. Love you're you, the Terry. Best.